Hi, scrolling along with Susan. Hey, I'm back in the workshop and I'm going to be doing a little scroll saw uh, compound cut, 3D compound cut. And I'm going to be using the pattern. This is a pattern from Steve Good's workshop. It's called Scroll Saw Workshop. And you have so many downloadable free patterns you can get from him. He's an awesome scroll sawer. For this project, you're going to need a one and a half by one and a half inch square, about three inches long. And you can use a two by four. It's just slightly smaller than one and a half inches, but it, this pattern actually does fit one of these. And if this is your first compound cut, it's best to go with pine. It's the easiest to cut. For this project, I'm using a one and a half by one and a half inch poplar, which is a hardwood, but it's one of the softer hardwoods. And you need three inches. I'm going to be using six inches because I'm going to cut two of them out of this piece of wood. It's nicer to have a little bit more to hold on to when you're scrolling. Now it is important that you have a nice flat surface on all four sides. You don't have to have it super sanded because as long as it's flat on the surface because your birdhouse is going to be cut out from the inside. To make life a lot easier to attach, make sure, sure that you are creasing very well right in the center so that it's easier to place it on your piece of wood. I'm just using Gorilla Spray Adhesive covering the back of my pattern. And a lot of times I will place the pattern on a piece of contact paper, but since I don't have to remove the pattern off of the wood since it's cut on the inside, I'm not worrying about that. That's just an extra step. And then I'm placing it very carefully so the crease is right where it should be on the edge of the wood. Now, if you're just starting out, you can certainly use a hand drill. But I strongly suggest, if you're going to continue doing scroll saw work or any kind of woodworking, having a drill press saves so much time and it's so much more accurate than the hand drill. Now, for this project to drill the hole in the middle, I'm going to be using Forstner bits. And these are from Irwin. I think I got them at Home Depot. They're not very expensive and I have used them a lot. So that would be something else that you might want to look into. I'm using a half an inch to cut the to drill the hole in the middle here. Hopefully you can see the positioning of this. You do not need to take the hole all the way through. In fact, it's very difficult on the small little piece to go all the way through. So I'm going to go about a half an inch deep on this side. You could make this two-sided and do the hole, the Forstner bit hole on the other side but I'm only doing it on one. There are a lot of different options here. Making sure it's positioning correctly before I start. Now I'm drilling a quarter inch hole for the dowel rod to fit for the perch. The next hole you're gonna drill is gonna go all the way through and it's gonna be in part of the scrap area here. What I'm going to do is drill through so I can feed my blade up and through and cut the entire piece out without cutting in from the side. Blades are fairly inexpensive, so always make sure you start with a brand new blade and make sure that it is square to the table in front. Let me lift it up here. On the side and in back. That is going to be crucial to get a very good compound cut. A word of caution at this point. There is not that much room underneath this blade when it goes up and down. So make sure you're not sticking your fingers underneath and could possibly injure yourself by getting them pinched. As for the speed, um, you need to work with that. Depends on what kind of material you have or whatever you're comfortable with. Even if it's at a higher speed, it's up to you to control your piece with your hand movements. 
I have sped this part up a little bit so you don't have to watch me cut the whole thing. Keep in mind that you don't want to push your piece through or you'll bend the blade and it will not come out the way that you want it to come out. Also, notice how many times I reposition my hands. You always want to keep a nice grip on the piece so it doesn't bounce up and down, but you also need to hold it in a manner that will keep it nice and firm against the table. Obviously you can see this is loose. I am going to tape this back in so I can cut the side profile. So I'm just using regular packing tape to secure my piece. Now that I have the tape back together, I'm going to go back to the drill press and drill my pilot hole to cut out this side profile. Here I am just cutting out the side profile and then taking the piece apart by removing the tape first and then you'll have four loose pieces to remove to get down to your actual piece that you cut out. Now if you can see this on the camera it's a little bit deeper on this side than on this side so I'm going to have to sand right there to make it nice and smooth and on the bottom it wasn't exactly perfect either so I'm going to be doing a little bit of sanding there. I'm also going to drill the hole here a little bit deeper so that it um, looks better on the final piece. I've cut both of these out and they're pretty nice. They're going to need a little bit of sanding but I thought I would also cut one out of pine, just a two by four, and wait until I get it cut out before I cut the middle part. I might go all the way through on this one, and then the dowel rod I may go all the way through on this. So I'm doing a third one. So I was right in the middle of this and realized I did not change blades uh, to get a new blade in there. So I went back to my original pilot hole and I'll be starting to cut on this side to meet where I cut the first time. I know most people prefer hardwood over pine, but sometimes pine, it's very figured and I think it's going to come out very nice. I always like this part. It's like unwrapping a present. I like the pattern on this wood. I've taken the pattern off the top of my piece that I cut and I'm going to just tape it on here. This piece is so small that I'm going to be using my clamps that I made to hold it still when I'm at my drill press. Now if you want to make some of these clamps yourself, I have a video on that. I could have done a little bit better job centering it there. So I am measuring and going to cut on my scroll saw, the dowel rod. And lastly, with this pattern came this cute little bird. And I am just going to be cutting out, I'm stack cutting a quarter um, inch deep hardwoods so I can cut two at a time. Now it's time to sand away any imperfections that may be there with some files and some regular sandpaper. Once I finish my sanding, I like to take mineral spirits and wipe off all of the sawdust. Now the seal white pieces, I like to use pure tongue oil. It smells great. It has a nice sheen to it, not too much. It takes a little bit longer to dry, but I really like the texture. I am just putting a dab of glue on the inside to secure my perch and I probably should have glued on my birds to the outside of the house before putting the tongue oil on but I'm sure that it will be just fine. I'll use um, super glue. I have purchased a bag of all different size screw eyes and these are the smallest that I have and they will be perfect to put on the top part of my birdhouse to hang it. 
Now to start it, the, any of my little drill bits are going to be too big. So I'm just using an awl just to start the hole right at the top. And then I can screw in the screw eye with a little bit of pressure. The next time I will glue the bird onto the wood before putting my tongue oil on. It will be fine with a super glue, but I think it would be a better bond if I glue it on before the tongue oil. And I'm just going to be holding it here for a minute. Well, another great pattern from Steve Good. These were fun to make. I've got a couple friends that are bird watchers that I think I might give these to. I really like the poplar ones because of the different color of wood, but I definitely think the pine is the way to go. It's got a lot of figure in it. It is a light color that you can stain whatever color that you want, and it's easier to cut. So I hope you enjoyed watching this, and see you next time.